What's up, wrestling freaks of America? Welcome to MTV's Beach Brawl. I'm Kid Rock with the legendary Jimmy Hart and my main man, Raven, from World Championship Wrestling. And we're here at Fat Tuesdays in Cancun with six of the most athletic, high-flying wrestlers in the WCW. In a few minutes, they're all going to climb into the ring for a no-holds-barred battle royale without uh, cheese. I want like a battle royale with cheese. It's like some Pulp Fiction gibberish, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Their mission is to be the last mean mother left standing and when the music stops the last one when the music stops got that now we've got a slamming band that's going to give us a beat while the wrestlers take a beating and jimmy tell us about our rockers baby you know you got that kid rock roadrunner recording artist fear factory will be performing live during the six-man battle royal they'll be rocking the house with six of the wcw's hottest wrestlers are rocking the ring this is the first time we've had a match in a band performing at the same time so it's gonna be nuts he said nuts i said nuts and here's what the noise is all about this trophy, it's the coveted Beach Brawl trophy, and only the meanest, baddest guy is going to walk out carrying this trophy. Raven, you've been in a few battle royals, so why don't you tell us what the lowdown is and what it's all about? Well, the whole object is the last man standing is the warning. you got to toss everybody out. It's the last man standing, like that Bruce Willis movie. Of course, that thing didn't do any box office. But that, that thing sunk faster than the Titanic. I don't even want to get into that. <laughs> All right, now, am I right? Wrestling is a game of quickness, agility, all that. You got to know when to make your moves kind of like macking, you know, kind of like pimping, right? Is that correct? Pimping Would that be safe easy. to say? Okay, I got that. So now I'm going to pack up my game, make my move over here, and check out the Nitro Girls while we check in with... WCW's Jimmy Hart and Larry Zbysko for what's got to be the most violent, brutal display of carnage and carnality to happen all weekend at Snowed In. So, Jimmy, take it away. Well, first of all, you know, Larry, you might be the living legend when it comes to wrestling, but this man right here, Rob Zombie, is definitely the living legend when it comes to heavy metal. And we're here at Snow Summit Mountain Resort in Big Bear Lake, California. And in just a few minutes, seven of the toughest guys in WCW are going to enter the ring for an old-school battle royal. Hey, Larry! Why don't you tell us what's in store for us? You know, it's my pleasure being here with Mr. Zombie. I uh, haven't worked with The Walking Dead since Dusty Rhodes, but <laughs> Battle Royal, very simple, very brutal. We got seven guys going in, going to start off as a free-for-all, eventually wind up probably mano oh mano but surrounding the ring, the only way to get tossed out of here and lose is over the top, your feet hit outside the ring, which here is nothing but cement with rocks sewed in, so uh, we may produce a few more zombies after this event. Yeah, it's going to be a war, all right. Let's go to the ring with radio personality and razor and tie recording artist, Stuttering John. John, take it away. Hey, thanks a lot, Rob. This is the Pro Wrestling Reflection Podcast with your host, the professor, Chao Bello Veracruz. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful, Tommy Wonder, and I will take the powers of those that have no fear! And the prodigal one, JB, the queen, yeah. the queen of the crop. Now it's time to go back in time in the time machine. The American Dream! Master Rose! Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. To be the man, you gotta beat the man. Woo! Look at this. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming. Fed to the rules and I hit the ground running. Didn't make sense not to live for fun. Your brain gets smart but your head gets dumb. So much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? You'll never 
never know if you don't go You'll never shine if you don't glow Hey now, you're an all-star Get your game on, go play Hey now, you're a rock star Get the show on, get paid What's going on there, Reflection Nights? What is going on there to the PWC Ice, the Hami Nights, all the ice all over the world, the left, the right, the Dems, the Republicans, the Hamas Ice, the Israel Ice, the Ukraine Ice, the Russian Ice, you know, the ice all over the world that are just as crazy as can be. It is 2020 press, and you know what? A lot of people want to go out with a bang. They want to get because this has been a crazy year. This has been a crazy year in news. It's been a crazy year in politics. It's been a crazy year in wrestling. So hopefully we get into 2024 in a couple of weeks. And we're going to go in, you know, it's like going over the mountain. Once we get over that hump of the mountain, we go, it'd be smooth sailing. It'd be like the light at the end of the tunnel. But you know what? Knowing the way, knowing the things I know and knowing the things that TW knows, we're just going to keep going up and up to more fuckery and, and more foolishness. And 2024 will be even worse than 2020 correct. But neither here nor there. But welcome or welcome to the PWR podcast here at the Homily Media Group at Podbean.com. And welcome or welcome to a special episodic edition of the Pro Wrestling Reflection Podcast. But before I do that, before I even tell you what we are doing, because it is special to a degree, because we're not going to talk about one episodic episode. We're not going to talk about two episodic episodes. We're actually going to com- combine three episodic episodes into one special edition. But again, before I even talk about that, I must introduce myself because I am being like that. I must introduce myself because I am, you know, oh so glamorous about it. I'm oh so studious about it. But most importantly, I'm oh so glorious about it. The only objective man in this IWC, YWC, PWC, Pumpkin Tree. The only objective man in this political spectrum. Your friend of mine, the Professor Chabel the Coon. And I'm not here alone. No, 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 no. I will be alone in January in 2024, but that's neither here nor there because somebody's going to be on a, on a boat. Somebody's going to be enjoying war, warm weathers. And we are counting down to the, you know, the butt orgies that he's going to have. Yeah, you told me this. You, you, you said, said you weren't oh. going. No, no, this is your shit. I just, I'm just, I'm just reading the DMs. But neither here nor there. But he is the conservative liberal, the liberal conservative dum dum duo in its own, the Iron Stomach one, Doctor Freaking Stein, and his butt is oiled up and ready to go for 2020. Quattro. Tommy, wonder how you doing, my friend? Why you give me that face? You're talking about butt sex, and then you're acting like it's someone else that's the one that's got it on their mind. That's you. It's always you. I got. I don't have that on my mind. They're, they're astro sliding into your DMs among other places of yours, and uh, it's okay. It's 2023, almost 2020, quattro, and you know what? People love you just the same, Professor. I took good pictures when I was in DC for you, and I forgot to send them. You know what they were? Oh, I'm gonna send them to you now. You can get your reaction to it. I'm going to send him and make Ray feel bad because I didn't do one for him. But you know what? You see something that reminds you of your people and you, you're like, you know what? Mm-hmm. You, you're like, if I and, see and, one. And by the way, Reflection Nights, on the audio, you can't see this. So I'm going to have to explain it to you. And on the YouTubes, if this gets uploaded by A-Track Brown, I'm going to have to also, you know, explain it. Because I don't have the, uh, the technical expertise to, like, show it and kind of, like, split screen it. So, you know what? This is going to be a joke between me and T.W., and hopefully, TW, are you going to do this? Because I guess it's, kind of, it's kind of Ray, too. Here it is. These things made me think of you guys. Well, you specifically. Mm-hmm. When I was walking through. By the way, the, the, the Christmas tree lighting for the White House, that tree is not as big as I thought it was. I must be confusing it with the Rockefeller tree because it ain't that big. I was in front of the White House and... As close as you can get. Now, oh, can this, get. this is in Washington. These these trees. Yeah, they got a little trail. It's got the nativity scene, and then it's got trees from every state and every territory. And I saw, I looked and took a picture of New Jersey and Puerto Rico for you. Oh, cool! Thank you very much. Is Ray Puerto Rico? Yeah. Okay, so it was Ray when I thought for both, but then I, I couldn't pick New York because he's supposedly moving to Florida. And then you know, until he moves to Florida, I can't. I got to pick one for him. Well, you could have took the picture of Florida too, you know, just to be fair. 
Oh, I, I was never that. by it. That's, then why didn't you take a uh, picture of Michigan? I did. Oh, you did? Because New Jersey, it? Michigan, and Puerto Rico were all near each other. They were in alphabetical order. Oh, cool. This, is, this is where our tax dollars are going, ladies and gentlemen. The trees. That's not, even, that's not even as close as I got to the White House, actually. Just, this is how close I got to the White House. I'll send this to you. If you, no, you can't see it because again, I don't. I was gonna, it. I was gonna yell. Get used to them bars, Joe Biden. You and your son are gonna be cellmates. Are, are you gonna do? Did you yell out F Joe Biden? No, I didn't. No, because there was like everything over there is. I mean, there's memorials all over, and the, the Vietnam one had a ceremony going on, um, and all of them had like things saying respect, be be quiet, be respectful. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because Denise and I are walking up to the Vietnam Memorial, but we're not there yet. And two Rangers fans were walking past us. And I said to her, I dare to yell, go Caps, as they walk by, right? Because later on that night, we went to the Capitals Rangers games. What are the Capitals with the ass whooping on the Rangers for nothing? And I was there mm -hmm. for it. Um, but the uh, second I said it, she looked at me with her eyes bugged out and went, are you know what you don't yell things during the ceremony there i'm like what i'm at right here as we're walking in to those two people and then she looked back and went oh she thought i was saying yell go caps while we walked by the ceremony i'm like come on that's <laughs> not me i wouldn't expect i wouldn't ask you to do something i wouldn't do myself but i feel like if if the girl yelled go caps they uh -huh. would laugh if i yelled at me and the dude might have to trade blows or something so that's why i was trying to get her to do it if we were walking and you you said that, I probably would have said, "You mean here at the at the ceremony? Huh? <laughs> Fuck it, you, you, I'll do it." <laughs> Professor has no, don't care. No, I didn't want to fight nobody. I was just a friendly. What's the fight? What, what's the fight? I'm saying go Caps in, in Vietnam. Ooh. Oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I was like, I go US to the Caps. memorial yet. I was to the place where you start walking, that's separated off from it. Have you ever been to DC? Yeah. Yeah, so every year, you know, not every year, but, you know, when my daughter was, my oldest daughter was in school, unfortunately, she got cut out because COVID canceled her senior year. But her, the former tenant's son, and then cousins and, and friends' kids, I always see the D.C. trip for seniors. So Emily and Aubrey, they're going to be seniors in two years. I think I'm going to foot the bill and send them there. I always saw... What kid would want to go to D.C.? Like, what the fuck? What kind of field trip is that? I want to go to Boblo, which you probably don't know what that is. That was our little Cedar Point on an island called Boblo Island. But I want to go to okay. Cedar Point. I want to go to Disneyland. I want to go to uh, Universal Studios. Who the hell wants to go to D.C.? And then I went. And it's pretty heavy, man. I I went to the Martin Luther King uh, Memorial, which was pretty pretty awe-inspiring. Uh, Thomas Jefferson statue, that building is pretty nice. Of course, my high school mascot was the Abe's because my mm -hmm. school was Lincoln. So I had to stand in front of the Lincoln Memorial, and I did. Me and Abe, two Abe's just hanging out. Um, I saw um, the Korean Wall, the World War II Memorial, the um, Washington Monument, which looks like a tiny little thing from far away. But it's massive when you're next to it. But just so you know. There'll never be a time when you get me in the top of that thing because it already looks like it's falling apart. It's been repaired because of an earthquake, but it's pretty awesome. And I think as a kid, it would actually be worth going there and just seeing history. Right. For some reason, they don't mess with them statues. They only do that down south. But um, well, very, very going, cool. going to D.C. is like going to the biggest museum in the country. Right. right? And it's called instead the, of going the to like the Museum of, of Natural History, instead of going to the Museum of Natural History in New York City, which I've done a couple of times right. for school. It felt boring. It felt time consuming. It felt, you know, like, oh, I'm going to take a test about it. But when you're going, you know, physically, well, for me, living in the East Coast, going, taking a trip to D.C., you and you look at the monument, you look at the White House as close as you can. It is a special moment. And then when you get older, you feel an appreciation. But again, people feel that when they go to Graceland. People feel that when they go to the Grand Canyon. People will feel that when they go to Mount Rushmore. It just it will hit you in so many different ways. And I agree with it. And, and, it, you and know, I want to go back and do and it hit the professor when he tour. went to Vegas for the brothels. So, you know, I understand they have all the, male brothels. No, it's female brothels. Shut up, man. What? God damn it. What's wrong with you? Get your head oh. out your ass. That's where you uh, met Ray, right? Say what? That's where you and Ray met. Hell no. Jesus was that Christ. the what what's the what's is the bunny ranch and then uh 
Dude Ranch? Is that where you met him? No, I went to the Bunny Ranch. That's all you need to know, okay? <laughs> you really went there? No, I saw it. That ain't in Vegas. That's that's in uh, Reno. No, that's not in the Strip. You got you to gotta travel. That's like Reno. hours. It's worth it. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, if you're already going to Jersey, I mean, from Jersey, <laughs> why not go up, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want... That guy died, didn't he? Yeah, I think got so. it on the Bunny Ranch? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But again, we, we Reaper can't, number we, one moment. There's gonna be more Reaper moments. Of course. Oh, hey, I know you will keep you you will keep abreast of things that happen Reaper style wise. But anyway, we have to get into this episodic episode, TW, because again, it is a special edition uh, episode. It, you know, for Donnie Donnie Day One, he probably would say, Professor, isn't this like technically episode 179, 180, 181? No, I can't cheat like that, Donnie. No way. I can't cheat like that. This is episode 179, but there's three episodes in one. And the reason, TW, I picked this is because, you know, we can never forget for pro wrestling, the expansion of pro wrestling, the popularity growth of pro wrestling, there was a partnership if to a degree, if you read. And remember in the 80s, MTV and WWF, WWE, whatever you want to call it, got together at the right time. You know, MTV needed to gain traction for a cable channel that people kind of like did not take seriously. Music 24 hours a day, that kind of was stupid. And of course, Vince McMahon Jr., you know, the patriarch, the visionary, wanted to put pro wrestling on mainstream. So it was a match made in heaven. And we all know this, the war to settle the score, the Slammy Awards. But again, the partnership between the WWE and MTV was paramount. So I, this is why I wanted to pick this Reflection Nights, because, again, MTV does not get a lot of that credit for that kind of expansion growth. But let's let's just say this, Reflection Nights, in the 90s, for the explosion of the Monday Night Wars, Eric Bischoff wasn't like uh, blinded by that kind of, you know, by not thinking, you know, bigger, you know what I mean? By being a visionary himself. Of course he copied everything that that was successful for Vince McMahon in the 80s to a degree. So it was a no-brainer for Eric Bischoff to have this kind of partnership between himself, WCW, and MTV because he thought the cross-promotion you know, MTV in the 90s with all the with the real world and the road rules and, you know, people taking MTV TW seriously and respecting the channel. It was a no brainer for Eric Bischoff to do this. But there is a difference. I will say this. There is a difference <laughs> in the there is a difference between the WWE's approach to the partnership with MTV and WCW's approach to to the partnership with MTV. So this is why I picked this episode. So. During the 1998 and 1999, I can't get the, the exact uh, date reflection, so excuse me for, for this, but you'll know where I'm going with this. Eric Bischoff really, like, whored out WCW, and I'm not trying to make a joke out of this, TW, but in the span of a couple of months, TW, you know where I'm going with this. All the celebrities in 1998, and I, can, I you can count it, Carl Malone, Dennis Rodman, Jay Leno. In a span of like three months, in 98, did all that stuff on Monday Nitro, Thursday Thunder, and pay-per-views. And you know what? The oversaturation of using celebrities, you know, there is a downside to this. Because on the WWE side, Reflectionites, you know, you pick your spots. You make them feel, you know, you make the moment as big as it can be. A la Mike Tyson in WrestleMania. A la Mr. T in WrestleMania 1. Cindy Lauper, WrestleMania one. You just don't, you know, chug along celebrities. Every, it seemed like it was every month that WCW was trying to chug uh, celebrities every month because Eric Bischoff was so, you know, let's say fascinated, so obsessed with cross with making uh, WCW crossover mainstream. So in 1998, of course, this partnership between WCW and MTV was a no brainer. TW, we can understand, right? You know, you want to cross over, you want to go mainstream and all this stuff. But the way WCW picked their spots, and three uh, events happened, uh, Reflection Nights, between 1998 and 1999. We had the Beach Bowl. Well, in, I don't know in, in terms of chronologies, but 
hear me out. We had actually we had the winter brawl first, then we had the ultimate video bash second, and then for spring break we had the spring brawl brawl. So and TW, before we even talk about what we saw in these uh, little special editions, what say you between, you know, don't give out what you saw with WCW, but you know where I'm going with this. What say you about, do you see a difference between the professional relationship that WWE, like, went with MTV with their events? And maybe people might say, well, the Slammy Awards was not professional, but Slammy Awards, remember, when you had the VJs coinciding with the wrestlers, Vince McMahon knew what he was doing. In that instance, Vince McMahon knew how to use those VJs for the war to settle the scores. But Tito, you know where I'm going. What say about the difference? I will tell you WWE this, approach this, this and is, approach. This is the first thing I thought because the 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 snow brawl had Rob Zombie basically as the host, mm-hmm. and the beach brawl had Kid Rock as the host, mm-hmm. and then the the rain. The rain thing. I don't know who hosted that one. Um, I can't remember who. It was one of the VJs, Adam Holmes, I think. Yeah. So the difference for me, and I didn't watch the MTV stuff live, but I've seen it over the years a million and one times. Mm -hmm. It felt like a partnership of WWE and and MTV making that show. Like it had members of both sides running it. Mm Mm-hmm. The MTV Snow Brawl and the MTV Beach Brawl absolutely felt like an MTV show. All of it. It was, uh-huh. and I get it, it was, which I think is a mistake, it was catering to the MTV watcher, not the wrestling watcher. Uh-huh. So what I mean by that is, if you're a wrestling fan and you watched the Brawl for it all, you were like, you still felt like you were watching wrestling. It, and if you were an MTV fan watching it, you're like, wow, this is wrestling. And then if you seek to watch wrestling another time on a different channel, not MTV, you would still feel like you were watching wrestling. This shit, especially the Beats for All one, was so guerrilla style that, you, it, like, dude, it felt like wrestling was just the background. It didn't even uh-huh. feel like it was what we were watching. It felt like, not that it felt like it was Kid Rock's show, it, it just felt like, that the fucking music was terrible. The, right. uh, I don't. I, I love heavy music, but I also like someone being able to sing. And this dude was to me reading satanic verses or something. But it was not enjoyable. the The fact that they kept going to the band and then going to the wrestling was kind of like pick one. We don't need uh-huh. to see the band. We can hear them while we watch the wrestling. And it was just it was horrible. And I'm stunned. That it made two years, but I'm also not stunned that they went snow to beach or whichever way around. They tried it different. I actually enjoyed the snow one more than I enjoyed the beach one, which was en- odd. Yeah, why did you enjoy the snow one more? Because, because it was, I felt it, like it, it kind of had the same kind of like you know setup. Right. It had the same sequences. Just but it felt like a wrestling show to me. Like even mm-hmm. Rob Zombie felt like he would have been on Nitro the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it still felt like an MTV show, like spring break you know when you watch spring break and there's bands and they keep showing the audience instead of the band that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff that's what it felt like to me like it felt like the wrestling was the audience not the focal point but the snow brawl which is insane to me that they were outside where there was snow and wrestling Mm -hmm. in their singlets but there was one particular spot that was pretty awesome where disco inferno got thrown into a snow bank that Mm -hmm. was cool but but the the beach brawl 100 percent unenjoyable unenjoyable well, before we get into the snow and beach balls, because that was more paramount for WCW because it went off without a hitch to a degree, we have to talk about the failure that was called the ultimate video bash. TW, they were invading New York. So I'm just giving you the logistics about that. Again, this is, I think, this is during the 98, 99 thing. So there was a problem with the ultimate video bash, uh, WCW ultimate video bash reflection ice. There was a torrential rainstorm (laughs) in New York City. So that already curtailed what uh, WCW wanted to do for that show. But from what I got about it, TW, so you only saw the only video that I can send TW was one match that that went that they could only do. And that was a tag team match between the public enema against high voltage. Now, from what I understand, TW, what they what it was supposed to be was a hybrid of the wrestlers picking their favorite bands or favorite genre of music, and that's what they were representing. 
So I forgot what. Let's just say High Voltage was a uh, rocking kid. Was no, rocking they kid. were Will Smith. Oh, they were Will Smith. Okay, so they were. What was Public Enema? LL Cool J. Okay, so it was it was basically Public Enemy and LL Cool J against High Voltage and Will Smith. So it was supposed to be a tag team match to see who whose genre of music was gonna go on. I think it was kind of like a tournament style too. So you know, again, neither here nor there. But the gods said, no, we're WWE fans here in New York, so we're gonna b- make it rain <laughs> and fuck this this show up. This was supposed to be a three hour free event on MTV. But you can get you can get you can understand where they were going with this. The the thing that probably would have been more positive about this was there was not L O Cool J was not going to sing Mama Says Knock You Out while Public Enema was being in the ring doing their spots, and Will Smith was not going to sing Getting Jiggy with it while High Voltage was getting their shit in too. T W. So I'm just giving you that, those logistics. They had to come so, out with microphones and plastic bags so they didn't get electrocuted. Yeah, that that too. So you know, again. Let's just just let's just look at it from that curtail because again, WWE, and I have to go back to the war to settle the score. I have to go back to the Slammy Awards, and I think in a did they do did, didn't they do Sunday Night Heat on MTV for that for the Super Bowl halftime or was that on USA? Wasn't uh, that about halftime Heat? Yeah, halftime heat. Was it on MTV or yeah. was it on USA? I forget, but neither here. It was on, I think it was on both, but the first one was on MTV. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm thinking about it. But you understand what Vince McMahon wants to you. He he makes MTV come to him. That's what it is. It felt like to me that Eric Bischoff begged MTV just to be on their their TV. He begged MTV to just give them maybe a half hour or an hour or three hours, and we'll do it your way. We'll do it anyway, just to get their foot in the door. You can see the difference between production quality on the WWE side and then the WCW side. Maybe because of the failure of the Ultimate Video Bash TW, that's why they went very hokey with the Snow Brawl and the Spring Brawl. Do you agree with that assessment or you have a different take on it? Absolutely. It was it, it, it was not good. <laughs> it, you said it, it felt like they were begging. It, that, it, that's what, it almost felt like they were guests, not the focal point. Like You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like... It was like an existing show, and today we got wrestling on it. It didn't feel like a wrestling show. And I and I and I tell you what, as you were saying all that, so many things popped in my head. First thing I thought was blame WCW that they didn't have contingency plans for an indoor building, but I didn't know it was free. So when you mm-hmm. tell me it's free, a if that would have been a sporting event on TV, it would have been a rain delay or rain out, and we would have got a rerun of something, right? So mm-hmm. it's free. You don't have to give people their money back. You don't have to do anything. You just got to say, hey, sorry, guys, weather's not permitted. And you could either done it the next day, but maybe that rain lasted for three days. Then do it next weekend. It's MTV. There ain't shit that you got on that can't be preempted to do this show that you supposedly want to do, right? Well, remember, so, I mean, you have to look at it from a logistics side on WCW. Maybe they have planned public relations right. events for these wrestlers too, planned autograph but, sessions. But based that you on can't. the wrestlers they had there, mm-hmm. they were nobodies. And you could have just sent six other guys that weren't booked on the show that you would have had the next day, right? You know what I mean? I'm serious. Uh-huh. You and by the way, that's still contingency. If you know there's a chance the weather's gonna fuck this up, you either a have an indoor part that you could at least do what WrestleMania at the at the Giant Stadium did and have a thing built over so the wrestlers are at least protected. If the fans don't want to stay in the raincoats and umbrellas, that's on them. Well, remember the uh, the WrestleMania in Tampa Bay had a half an hour to a 45 minute rain, rain delay. delay too yeah. yeah and they had a damn thing over the top of it mm-hmm. but but this dude like first thing i thought was when chaos and 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 uh rampage or whatever his name was came out i thought they're gonna f- wrestle in this rain i'm like no there's no way i would have wrestling boots have no treads so you're begging to tear something. But like you said, it's the only match they really could have because it was basically ECW style where they just stood and beat the shit out of each other, not really ran ropes or anything like that. Uh, hey, other- real, real wrestlers wrestle in torrential rain. I mean, the WWF wrestled in Puerto Rico in torrential rain. If you want to call rain. that wrestling, then you call <laughs> that wrestling. But that was not. I was looking up the halftime heats. I didn't know they had them from 99 till 2019. And the last one was NXT. But I'm looking to see... But not, but but some of them were on MTV, right? That's what I was looking at. Was it? It doesn't show. 
Oh, what channel? Maybe I'm, a, I'm, I might have thought they did. But USA again, Network. Well, it was USA, USA Network. USA Network. But the, but the eighties, it was still WWF, and they did the war to settle the score and all that stuff. So right. they did it right on that instance. But I, you know, again, but again, you're right. Again, WCW. My bad. They, they were, only did three of them. They did one in ninety nine, two thousand, and then twenty nineteen. No, no, no. That's that. That's neither here nor there. I just, I thought they did a halftime heat on MTV, but they didn't. That was my no. mistake. But uh, USA. Like I said, Eric Bischoff felt like he was begging them just to get on the TV. And but let's just look at it from not not what we saw on these particular episodes. We have to look at the landscape of wrestling. This is the zenith. This is the peak. This is the phoenix of the Monday Night Wars. Now, granted, TW, you know, WWF. Is already has the advantage because those three letters were already in the lexicon. It was in the mindset of everybody. Oh, well, I'm Hulk Hogan. You from WWF? No, I'm from WCW. You're going to say that first thing off the top of your head when you say you're Hulk Hogan or you're Randy said, you're from WWF, right? No, brother, I'm from WCW. Really? Oh, you know, it, it depends on the attitude of the business corporate suits, right? So if MTV is not giving the respect to, to the WCW wrestlers, and again, WCW wrestlers did make appearances on MTV during th that time span because, again, I remember the Outsiders did a spring break appearance. I, I remember some, some WCW wrestlers did, like, some spot uh, guest appearances on, like, the dating shows of the spring break or the snow break or shit like that. Same thing with WWE. They did the same hokey shit, too, but the only difference was WWE didn't do a beach it. brawl. They didn't do a beach brawl. They didn't do a snow brawl. WCW went full board on the hokey shit. Which WWE I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. But again, it, it kind of takes away from the respectability oh, of the company. The results were, but the idea, like I, I would say 98, 99, that, I wouldn't say that's the zenith. It, didn't it peak in like 96, 97 for WCW? Money and wise then, and ratings wise, it was 98, 99. For WCW? Yeah. Wow. And then they had to beg again. You remember, you, you, when everybody thinks about 96 and 97, what is more about the wrestling bubble expanding and, and growing it? But that's when again, it started. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, from the wrestling universe, yes. And then they went out started. of business 2000, 2001. You, well, 2001 officially. But like uh, I said, 98. What a fall. That's again, a meteoric rise and an even meteoric fall. But again, the zenith and the zenith of the Monday Night Wars in terms of Main Street mainstream was ninety eight, ninety nine, respectively, and maybe a little bit of two thousand two also. But again, neither here nor there. So, with that being said, well, you want to put a bow on this too, and then we'll get. Well, into I will the say show? this: some of the blame has to go to Bischoff and WCW because, like I said before we started recording, you know, you're going on MTV, you feel like you're begging them to get on there. Well. Possibly because there was no Hall, there was no Nash, there was no Hogan, there was no Sting, there wasn't even a Luger. It was all guys that were undercard, if that. You know what I mean? Like, like they even. Uh, well, but those guys are so. But those guys are so business minded. They like that's not an appearance I want to do. They will say no. But that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If you want it to be huge, you got to put Hulk Hogan was on Russell Rock or whatever the hell that was called. You don't get any bigger than that, right? WrestleMania, you mean? Piper. Huh? Oh, you mean the war to settle the score? Yes, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you got that, and now you're now, and and then the other thing is, both instances, Billy Kidman is the cruiserweight champion for the snow brawl battle royal thing that was seven guys, and then the beach brawl that was six guys. Both times when he came to the ring, they pointed out how little he was, and it was like, come on, <laughs> like what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And then, like, Raven tried covering for it when Kid Rock did it. Actually, I don't even know if those two did it. But Rob Zombie was talking about it, and Larry Zimbisco and... Uh, Jimmy Hart. Was the other? Jimmy Hart was on both? Mm-hmm. Jimmy Hart, they were trying to make up, like, cover for them, calling him little. And I'm like, you're just, you're just making it look bad for everybody involved right away. What? And then we Again. Hugh Morris and Saturn and Chavo. It's just, it, obviously... Jericho and, and Booker T went on to be way bigger. Um, mm -hmm. You have both Crush and 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 what do you call him? Brian Adams and Brian um, Clark. Mm -hmm. the, the, one's presented as a star, the other one's the first guy eliminated as a job guy. You're just like, 
man, you could have had a nice moment where two guys fought each other that were a tag team. Like, remember, remember how many how many times do we watch Royal Rumbles when the opening two were two guys? Like, I think Demolition started a, a Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Rockers might have started one, or or, or Sean mm-hmm. and somebody. Um, like DiBiase and Bulldog started a Royal Rumble one no, time. Not, they weren't tag teams. I'm talking about when the tag team starts off the Royal only Rumble. one year. It was, one. The, it was just demolition. Only That's demolition. It. Okay, well, I can tell you another team that did it. Mm-hmm. We had a pseudo Royal Rumble here in the Michigan wrestling independent scene, and number mm-hmm. one was yours truly, Calavera Cortez. And number two was Rico Rodriguez. And we beat the shit out of each other for a minute. And then when the next guy came in, we teamed up and beat him up. And then beat up other guys until we finally were all numbered. But it was awesome. And that's cool to see. And I, I don't understand how you have a battle royal seven guys. I don't understand it. Uh, six well, guys well, made way for more the, for, the, for the circumstances of the winter break and spring break shows, they were only an hour or half hour, an hour long. Right, but seven's an odd number. Six made more sense. And I think one of them, the beach was after the snow, right? Technically, it should have been, I think, because of winter break and then, you know, the, right. the spring break. Because so that's, almost, that's, they were like, hold up, seven meant one guy had to jerk off in the corner while the other six paired off, right? So it at least made sense that two versus two versus two. Um, but yeah, it, it, this had great potential. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Untapped potential, if you will, but they the the, the execution. Let, let, let me change. Bang. Let me change the spectrum. All right, TW for not a what if scenario, but a TW scenario. Let's say Calavera Cortez was a contracted WCW wrestler, and Bischoff or whoever said, "TW, we're gonna you're gonna do both shows. You're gonna do the beach brawl, and you're gonna do snow snow brawl. We'll pay for your hotel and all that stuff." What would TW's mindset would be? For, you know, if there's a script or whatever the case may be, you know, you know, or how it's booked or whatever the case may be. But what would be TW's mindset being, you know, with given this opportunity to be on either, well, be on both Snow Brawl and Beach Brawl personally yourself? I, if I'm not winning it, I, and I think this is Brian Clark's mentality okay. and that Snow one, if I'm not winning it, I'm getting tossed out for a second because I don't want to be out there any longer than I have to be to not win it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, whatever I did do, you, I you wouldn't like. The, let me just. I don't mean to cut you off. You you wouldn't like the experience of being in this ambiance of let's say either the snow or the spring break uh, uh atmosphere with the kids. When and it's stuff? when it's sold to me, absolutely. But I can promise you that everybody that was there saw the writing on the wall when they got there. Right, like okay. like Crush's promo is one of the worst promos in the history of promos. Like he came off confident or whatever, and then just just shit the bed as he kept talking and it came off so hokey and like trying to be kid friendly and just i've done that same promo a million times with with the canadian imperial alliance with with jeff cavanaugh scott libido where Mm -hmm. you you pick the crowd up to knock them down jericho did it for the beach one and and crush did it for the uh the snow one and it was so predictable and it was so hokey that it, it you could tell he was just trying to fill space and he had to be in there to the end so he's just making the best of it brian clark's like all right i'm ready take me out right <laughs> and i don't even know who got thrown out first and the other one maybe chavo um maybe. but maybe i would still try to get my shine in because in case the right people were watching i would want me to have at least a highlight so i wouldn't just stand there punch three guys and then have him clothesline me over the top row. Like Hugh Morris did it best. He he got his shine in. And then he actually was the first one eliminated. was Hugh Morris, I believe. He got his mm-hmm. shine in. And was like, all right, guys, take me out. Because he's smart. He's been there. He's done that. He, he knows this is not going to be the success we thought it was. It's very hokey. Um, get me out of here. And that, that's without even knowing the camera angles that are showing the band more than they're showing the the wrestling there was one thing that i did like in this in the beach one where they showed the band and it was the bass player's finger strumming the the chords mm-hmm. as chavo got eliminated with the top rope and i thought that that's either an awesome coincidence for tv or there was someone in the back going put the Damn. camera here he's about to go out and this is perfect it's well thought out i would hope it was well thought out and not just a lucky freak camera angle um, probably, so probably, thought, probably that was choreographed to the right, to the umpteenth right. degree. 
for that. You hope, you hope because yeah. it was a nice moment. And if it was accidental, then I think it was edited because they found it and they're like, put this angle on TV. But if it was live, there's no way they edited it. They, so they the, had to do it. I don't want to put words in your mouth so you can agree with this assessment. This is the way I'm going to take it from you. If you was there, you probably w- you would have had the reality to say, okay, these kids don't know technically who I am as a wrestler. Right. Well, you know, these are not wrestling fans. The atmosphere is okay. I'm getting a good payday. I'm getting a free, you know, free room and board. You know, maybe I'll get a, a spring break hookup of <laughs> neither here nor there with an 18 to 24 year old college girl. Cause I'd do that I, in, in an instant, but anyway, that'd be my perk, but you know, I'll party with them, but you just want to get your shit in, make sure that Jimmy Hart sees you because he's, well, I guess, like you said, he's one of the big people from the WCW side on the wrestling side saying, okay, TW, AKA Calibera Cortez. He did his shit. He, you know, he, he got he it. Popped he, the crowd. He, he understood what he was there for and he popped the crowd as, as best he could. We're going to make sure that, you know, we're going to reward him for Thunder. We're going to re- reward him for Saturday night and all that stuff. Do I have it right or do you? Absolutely. I, w- I wouldn't want to look like a disgruntled employee in there, but I would have been, is my <laughs> point. Like, but you would have kept I, it to yourself. That's what yeah, I, that's what, I that's what I just went out there. You know, I talk about it all the time when. You can use, I can usually tell when someone's losing their belt because of the look on their face when they come through the curtain, right? And mm-hmm. it's obviously some people are better than others with the poker face, but 99% of the wrestlers telegraph when they're losing the belt. And I wouldn't be one of those people. I would go out there and make you, that's, that's one of the things that I prided myself on. I've said it on here a million times. Whoever I wrestled, I told them in the back, listen, we're going to steal the show. You're either in or you're out. But I'm going to steal the show. If you don't want to help, then whatever. And most guys are like, let's do it. And I'm proud to say most of the times I stole it, especially when I was the undercard. And I'm not yeah. saying when I moved up the card, there wasn't a young person that went out there with another guy and said, let's let's do it and steal the show. And they did. And that's good because I don't yeah. have to steal it anymore when I'm on the higher end of the show. Right. But when mm-hmm. you're a nobody. And so that's what you want to do when you come out there is is you two things. This was my main goal every time I wrestled, Professor. I wanted people to leave there thinking about me, but also thinking it was real because of me. And that's why I beat the shit out of people. Travis will tell you I earned the name Potato because I potatoed those sons of bitches. But I expected it in return. I didn't do it maliciously or bullying anybody. And and also, you wanted people to feel they got their money's worth no matter what you did in that ring. But if I did those two things, they did. Because if Uh you leave a wrestling show talking about it in a a way that isn't, like, disappointment, then you got Uh your money's worth. If you leave talking about it like, that was terrible, then you're not going back. I wanted people to come back. And so those are the two things that I shot for. One, they're going to think I was the best guy they saw that night. And two, they're going to think it was real. And both of those things would have been gotcha. because of me and mm-hmm. the guy I was in there with. Gotcha. All right. Now, let me go into a different uh, scenario here, TW. Follow me here with this. Because, again, we're talking about the peak of the Monday Night Wars. The You know, the Phoenix, again, reflection nights. 98, 99, 2000, 2001, and all that stuff. Or, like TW says, 96, 97. The reason I'm saying this, TW especially with these three episodic episodes in in one, we got to talk about the crowd. Because again, from this standpoint, and I'm going to use ECW because ECW was kind of, not the first, but their their focus was on the 18 to 34 year old demographic. And you know where I'm going with this, right? So with MTV Snowball, Snow Brawl, Beach Brawl, and the, and the Ultimate Video Bash, the crowd itself is in the demo. To a degree, it is in that 18 to 34 year old uh, demographic. And on one end of the spectrum, we've got to talk about WWE. They were going in the Howard Stern, Jerry Springer role because, you know, they had nothing to lose. They had to push the boundaries because they were losing in the ratings 83 weeks, like Bischoff said. So that was their presentation. They were going with the attitude there and all that stuff. Do you think? That the kids in the snow brawl, beach brawl, probably might have thought, you know, I want to do suck it. I want to say, you know, F everybody and all that stuff. But WCW was a little bit more family friendly. They were a little bit, you know, they were honed in on the FCC shit. 
you know, they couldn't, you know, go overboard. Do you think the 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 crowd? What say you about the crowd? Like, were they expecting like to go Jerry Springer esque, or were they more disappointed with, you know, like you say, the jobbers that were in the ring? And they were not technically reflection. I they were not jobbers. I mean, Booker T, Chaos, uh, Conan, Billy Kidman. They just they Ray weren't. Steel, they weren't. Jericho. They weren't top guys. Is what yes, my I, point is. Yeah, they weren't I, top guys, and some of them. But were I'm jobbers. just trying to give them the respect. But go, you know, do me a favor. I didn't even know this, but I mm-hmm. I want I looked up. Uh, high voltage in the, uh, the gimmick, the uh, Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. I knew they were from the power plant. I didn't know they were best friends going in there, so I appreciate that. Those guys never won. They they were jobbers all the time, and every now and again they'd get a win over a scrub, and then they'd lose immediately someone else. So for them to be on there, you're happy for them. And I, I would say there's something to be said that I didn't even realize they were jobbers because I thought they got put over. But they well, always yeah, lost. They, they won on Saturday night, but like you said, they won against Enhancement Town. Look it up, dude. They lost more than they won. They I, lost most of the time. And then one time they beat Public Enema. Mm-hmm. They never got it. They lost to them every other time. One time they beat the Southern Connection. I don't even know what that is. They beat Devin Storm and Hardbody Harrison. And the fact that I'm listing people they beat it means there's not that many of them. They always okay. lost to the Nasty Boys. They always lost to the Steiners, the Harlem Heat. Matter of fact, I think the first time I ever saw those guys was against the Steiner brothers. And I thought, wow, who are these guys? And they just got smoked. And they lost to the Outsiders, too. But again, yeah. let's yep. let's go to the question, like I said to you. But they were yeah. green as grass, and they had no charisma. So I get it in hindsight. But right. they had a look. No, no. But let's get back to the subject in hand. Again, do you think the crowd was disappointed in the no not with no. like uh, the presentation i think they were there for the expectation they got it i think they were there for a party and got it i don't think they were wrestling fans i think they were mtv fans um the they were, summer buddies. again it was free it was you know it was yeah. like you come on come on come on come all you know yeah. what are we gonna do today i don't know there's this wrestling shit let's go up there before we go get hammered tonight and whore around let's do right. it and the summer bunnies were way hotter than the snow bunnies. Just I had to get that in there because I saw a couple hot chicks in that beach beach one where I was like, "Ouch!" To no, no, because it, because again, from the rest the nitro of, dancers. Whew. Well, of course, Shawn but Michaels it, is a lucky guy. Yes, he is. But again, from the wrestler perspective, TW. See, see. Oh, you, you meant with the wrestlers disappointed with the fans? Yes. Oh, f- f- absolutely. Why do you think both Jericho and Crush took shots at him immediately? And, like, the fan, and the fans were drunk enough not to care either. So yes. that, that's the problem. So No, I'm, no. Crush had him. They were like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he said a bunch of geeks, and then he just lost it with his insults. They were weak. Mm-hmm. And they were like, ah, <laughs> whatever. Almost like it was a sign that said applause, cheer, boo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because, again, from the, from the atmosphere itself, again, these are drunk kids, again, getting a free ticket to, to, see, to be on TV, reflect right. guys. They're going to be on MTV during that peak, you know, three to five o'clock hour, TW. So we know this because I, I would call it. I'd be like, TW, I'm going to be on MTV on the snow right. brawl. I got good. I, record, I it yeah, record, record it for me. Yeah, record it for me. That, that's what I would say. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't ca- I technically, if I'm there, I wouldn't care because I want to you know, like hook up with some college babes and all that stuff. That's be my first motive. Most I, I would say they weren't disappointed in their participation, but it wasn't what they're used to. I've done shows where it was not a wrestling audience, and you're kind of like, what the fuck? Because you're frustrated because everything you're trying to do isn't working because they're not your typical wrestling fan. But these well, two particular matches, the, the beach and the snow brawls, they you didn't have to worry about that stuff. You No matter what the crowd is, you're going to pop for a moonsault from a 300-pound fat guy, right? Mm-hmm. So if they didn't pop for that, then bye i'm out of here there's no point so so in essence so in essence the battle royal was the safest match to have yes, with these shows 100%, 100%. you did not you didn't you, need a billy kidman versus chris jericho match right to do if you, if you had to put dean malenko out there with benoit people would have and left because oh, that's not what they're there for yeah, that, that w- then you would have done a drinking game with a Dean Malenko uh, and chris benoit match how many head scissors oh, oh how many arm bars oh how so many? One, of the, one of the biggest spots that got over was when when uh, Hugh Morris press slammed um, Rey Mysterio over his head and walked around teasing which audience section he was going to throw him in, mm-hmm. and then threw him into Billy Kidman and Saturn. I think um, that 
that got a pop because you you i always tell people when i wrestled i tell them i'm like you have to you have to acknowledge the crowd otherwise why are they there they could have mm-hmm. stayed home and watched it on tv why why do they not in the indie show but you know what i'm saying like they could have stayed home and watched monday night raw mm-hmm. um if you don't ask the crowd to cheer or boo you then why will they it won't they're just yeah. gonna sit there like yeah that and again not shit on the women but the women it's not i'm a shit on specific women the women that pop the crowd pop the crowd becky lynch the women that don't pop the crowd get everyone going to the bathroom or the snack bar which was Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler at SummerSlam. If you're not going to address the crowd, they're not going to address you. And uh-huh. and so this audience popped for Hugh Morris picking up and throwing Rey Mysterio around because they felt like, whoa, was he going to throw him at us? They felt engaged. And if you don't engage the audience, you're not going to get it. Hugh Morris, I can't believe I'm saying this, is probably the MVP of this match for making people care that we're there. Jericho yeah. did the little party thing. He he picked them up, knocked them down. But after mm-hmm. that, I don't think they cared about Jericho. Jericho was kind of lost until he won it. He was kind of okay. just there. Well, before we get into the logistics of the match, TW, let's one more area, and then we'll talk about the matches per se, because they were kind of like the same reflection ice. And we kind of harped on it a little bit, but let's just give it more uh, credence, if you will, TW. And we got to talk about the respectable commentary teams for both the beach brawl and the snow brawl. You kind of harped on it a little bit with it, but we have to at least give more credence to it. The winter brawl uh, announced team was Jimmy Hart, Larry Sabisco, and anchoring it, I don't know why he was the Tony Schiavone, but it was Rob Zombie. And on the other side of the beach brawl, it was Raven, Jimmy Hart, and anchoring that one was Kid Rock. So we understand, TW, that, you know, Rob Zombie and Kid Rock, respectively, you know, for those years, they're hot. They're on the top 10, top 100. Kid Rock is still hot. No, no. I'm talking about for that year. Again, I'm not trying to disrespect anything. But for that year, they're, they're in the top 10, top 100 billboards and all that stuff. So this is, for them, this is just an appearance on MTV for them. You know, they, you know, Kid Rock says he's a he's been a wrestling fan for years. And, you know, he's shown that proof and all that stuff. He's he, a Hall of Famer. He, yeah, and he's a Hall of Famer for a reason. So I'm not saying that he does, you know. And Rob Zombie was doing things with ECW too, so I'm not I'm not saying that they're not wrestling fans, but let, let's just talk about the. the I got to correct you on one thing because if this is '98, Kid Rock did not blow up until like '99, '98. He was I, well. I remember this is he, this is '98, '99. So I don't. Right, again. He, he Kidman came out to ball with the ball, I think, uh, mm-hmm. for the the beach one, uh, the snow one, which was okay. weird because Kid Rock was not there. But Kid Rock got his break. I don't. I think it was you. I was telling. He was Carson Daly's DJ. Like like the Tonight Show has the the Tribe Call Quest guy is is his dude or whatever. That's mm-hmm. what Kid Rock. Was. You mean Jimmy Fallon? Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Fallon, Fallon has, has the has has that that kind of band. But that, that's Tribe Call Quest. Whatever that guy that looks like mm-hmm. he would have been in Tribe Called Poet or whatever. Not poet. Uh, <laughs> Whatever the fuck. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. Go. Uh, anyway, that's what Kid Rock was in 98, 99. And then, and then that's when his record came out. Wait, he was he, the TRL he, DJ? I don't remember yes. that. He was, he was total request live. He was, he was always with Carson. Carson's like my DJ Kid Rock. And I knew Kid Rock from growing up. I never met him, but he would mm-hmm. sell cassettes out of the trunk at the roller skating rink and stuff. And I knew who he was. But I didn't listen to that shit. The, the Yola in the Valley and the Grits for Breakfast uh, album was was mm-hmm. that. And, and then when he finally signed and his album came out, Carson Daly's the reason he got probably on MTV because Carson Daly, that was his guy. I don't know if Carson hired him or if he got the job on his own. And then, but that's what he was. was well, he gave, or, just like wrestling, he gave him the rub because he right. had a platform. So it, yeah. it makes sense. But yeah. let's talk, let's talk about the commentary teams per se, respectively, TW. Again, we know that both Rob Zombie and Kid Rock are both wrestling fans. But like you said, that Rob Zombie took a little dig at Rey Mysterio. So, you know, did they get and Kidman? Their, and Kidman. But th- do you feel like, they were trying to be part of like a bad guy wrestling announcer where they were trying to be in character. What's that? You I think, about no, the commentary I, I think say? it was honesty. Um, but I think possibly because of how quick people interjected with it, 
it could have been state the obvious and let someone else say why it doesn't matter because he's this, that, and the other thing. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Like it's it's human nature. I don't. Who, how can you fall? I'm looking at Finn Balor, demon figure. It looks like Rob Zombie. Uh, so how can you fault someone for saying what most of those people in that audience were thinking, right? So you almost mm-hmm. are addressing the elephant in the room. Everyone in the audience is like, I could take that guy. I could take that guy. And so when Rob Zombie says it, and then Jimmy Hart or or Larry um, Zabisco or Raven say, yeah, but watch what this guy can do, and then he does it, then mm-hmm. you're kind of like, oh, shit. I can't do that. You know what I mean? You yeah. you made them. You, you stated the obvious. They're little. And mm-hmm. then you stated, but they're dynamite. They're not pushovers. Right. So, like I said, it's just I just wanted to, to like, point that out, TW, because, again, again, they're wrestling fans. We I'm never going to deny that they're not wrestling fans. But, again, like the way, like you said. I think they're the typical casual wrestling fan is what I think they are. And mm-hmm. the casual wrestling fan sees Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan and then sees Rey Mysterio and Kim and he goes, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but that, that's actually true. But you said a dirty word, T.W. You can't say that word. You said C word. Casual. Yeah. You're disrespecting them. They're supposed to be these hardcore wrestling fans. No, no, T.W. They're not casuals. They're hardcore. Shame on you. Shame on you, man. Hey, but hardcore again, spring break. <laughs> See, uh, he popped me on that one because I can't really come back with that because I just wanted to point that out again. You see, TW, you need casuals for a reason. Yeah. This is a great Isn't debate. NXT free tickets for students? No, they're at the performance center now, so it might be free tickets or it might be like from from the Twitter uh, handle. But there's but- there's there's a good chunk of them people that are the same ones there every week. Yeah, and and what I believe happened is. I think some of them went on a whim because a casual fan, and I think they got hooked and they come all the time now. I, that's what I think. So, be, but I don't, I don't, thing, I don't think they're paying for it. I think they they get it via the the Twitter handle or something like right, that. Right, but then they probably go there and buy merch because they're all sitting there wearing shit. Um, I, I just think that's a perfect, uh, and I think uh, Nitro when they were filming at Universal Studios, I think you got some people. Universal Studios is a little different because you're not there every week. Mm-hmm. So you can usually only go once and then go back and say, I'm going to go again. Um, okay. I'm sure Impact and TNA probably had people that got free tickets and then were like, I like this. I'm going to keep coming back. But the Performance Center being in that college town and when they were at full sale, I think some of them came and were like, this is awesome. Kind of like Devon Eriks. They mm-hmm. wrestled every week at the Sportatorium. At some point, someone's there for the first time and liked what they saw and became a regular. Well, these these kids at the snowball and, and the beach no, brawl are just getting free tickets. Yeah. They're not wearing an NWO shirt. And then you could tell which right. is a wrestling fan there and which is not. Right. So I did not see uh, any wrestling shirts on any of the kids. I didn't either, I but that was some blurry-ass footage you sent me, so there might have been. There might have been. But again, let's put a bow on the uh, the celebrities that were there. And, and again, on the snow brawl, I forgot to mention that the guest ring announcer was actually oh, yeah. from, <laughs> from the Howard Stern show, stuttering John Melendez. And, you know, he was actually good. He didn't stutter. I guess maybe the cold weather didn't make him stutter as much, but he was trying to get his shit in with his jokes, too. So, you know, T.W., there is the celebrities were there. So now let's get into the peak of the snow brawl and the beach brawl per se. So I'll try to kind of like abbreviate it for you, Reflection Nights, and then uh, TW will put a bow in it. So for the snow brawl from from the competitors that were there, Billy Kidman was one that I remember. The NWO was represented by Brian Clark and uh, Disco Inferno per se. If I remember correctly, Booker T was in the the snow brawl. Uh, Who else was there? I think Conan was in the snow brawl. Brian uh, Brian Adams was in the snow brawl. So TW from from the snow brawl aspect of the battle royal, uh, Crush won it, and no, then he didn't. he didn't win it. Who won it? Oh, Conan dressed up as a security guard, and then after Crush thought he won, rolled in the ring, drop kicked him out of the top rope, and then took the jacket off and held the snowflake up. Oh, okay, my my mistake, reflection. Has, so then technically, there's a storyline that never. Uh, kind of got a payoff on Nitro because I don't remember anything about this. So it, it was kind of like a hokey 
But the storyline yeah. was that Conan got kicked out of the NWO. And no, no, no. That I, part I get. No, no. I'm just trying to. I'm not being sarcastic, but you get where I'm going with this. No, for you know, sure. For, for, for the hardcore wrestling fan, for being really, they, they, they kind of suck the life or suck the fun out of anything that you cannot, that you have to keep it consistent. You have to keep the storyline going. So, you, yes, you're right. The Conan storyline being kicked out of the NWO, at least that was consistent. But then, you know, for the hardcore wrestling fan, be like, well, this didn't, like, you know, carry over on, onto Nitro. This didn't carry over onto Thunder. So what's ATW about? you know, what they were trying to do with the Battle Royal and the storylines and all that stuff. I think they were doing, well, the thing is, the audience probably doesn't even hear the commentating, but they're trying to do a spot show where everything starts and ends in the same night. So they they lead off talking about how Conan um, got kicked out and he wasn't happy. And then they had what looked like Crush, who was the guy talking smack to the crowd, win to make him mm -hmm. upset. And then boom, he gets tossed, you know, and everyone's happy. And that's what you do. You, you, he's the bad guy to start. And then no matter who eliminates him is going to be the baby face because they got rid of the guy that everybody hated. So, but I'm trying to look up the participants in this match. Um, did you say disco Inferno? Yes. So crush Conan, disco Inferno, Booker T, Brian Clark, and one of the high voltage guys, I think. Chaos. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more because it was seven in that first one. Well, we uh, don't have to be we, we don't have to be logistically correct, TW. So I just wanted to put that out there. Kidman. It was oh Kidman. It yeah. was a battle roar per se that uh Conan won. So in essence, for the hardcore wrestling fan that we watched this, I didn't and the funny thing, TW, I'll say this. I didn't I didn't watch this. I might have heard about it. But I wasn't interested in it because, again, this was I knew at that point this was not a spot show. This was not something that, you know, I was supposed to, like, you know, be invested in because, again, for the moment. And then the band itself killed it for me because I didn't right. really because I can't, like you said, pay attention to what's going on in the ring when you have heavy metal, heavy metal or hard rock band playing their guitar riffs and all that stuff It's like. It's like Body Slam. Remember the movie Body Slam where Kick was just playing the guitars and trying to, you know, rev up, you know, quick Rick Roberts and Tonga Tom and all that stuff? I got it for that part, for the movie part, but they were actually doing Body Slam for both the Snow Brawl and the Beach Brawl, and I was sick of it as a wrestling fan, TW. So, you know, what say you? I mean, they're lucky that no real wrestling fans would have thrown a beer bottle at them like, yo, shut up. I'm trying to watch the match. It, it was it was terrible. It was and it and then they're showing the names of the songs when they switch to a different song, but it sounded like the same song the entire damn time. And it's just bad. It was bad. And it was definitely took away from it feeling like a wrestling show. Now now I'll say this for the snow brawl reflection nights and TW, maybe you might agree or maybe not agree. But if Rob Zombie is your head commentator, supposedly, right? Why not have White Zombie play more human than you? I can actually go with it, you know, and his riffs actually could go within the the, the Battle Royal in certain songs. I forget. I don't know his whole, like, catalog, TW, but why not White Zombie? You know what I mean? Why not have him there? And for the Beach Brawl, why not? Because by 99, he's solo. He's not in White Zombie no more. He's just Rob Zombie. Well, just sing a catalog, TW. I right. might, or have How about it. just play the damn album and he can still do commentator talk about his shit while he's talking about wrestling and then you'll have a damn band playing on because aren't you supposed to look at the band and but you're also supposed to look at the wrestlers it's just stupid it's a, and and that was beach brawl because kid rock had mentioned they were gonna have a dj playing tunes and then we had a death metal band play so that confused me right. um well, we get, let's talk about Beach Brawl right now. So I, let me get the logistics here for the Beach Brawl. While Kid Rock was uh, announcing people, we saw Billy Kidman again. This is his second appearance here. We saw Chris Jericho. We saw Hugh Morris rocking a Fear Factor or Fear Factory shirt. We also saw Rey Mysterio Jr. on this one. Raven was on commentary. He did not wrestle. We saw Javo Guerrero Jr. here. So let me see who else is left. We have Saturn, Perry Saturn making an appearance here at TW. So I think I got most of the participants there. It was but only again, six in that one. Right. 
So again, if Kid Rock is your lead commentator, he can sing My Name Is... He can sing all those songs you're talking about too. Maybe I needed to hear recognizable songs instead of like a studio band or a house band or a club band trying to get over and trying to get a name. Name recognition matters to me for the Professor TW. That's what I'm trying to say. If you have Kid Rock singing the tunes and while I'm watching the match that, that Kid Rock is singing and rapping, whatever the case may be, Maybe I can tolerate it. I might not like it, but I can tolerate it. What's ATW? You agree with that assessment or different take? Yeah, it, it's it's not good. It's, it's it could have made it better. And I just read some stuff on the Snow Bra. It was the follow up to the horrible Ultimate, Ultimate. Video Bash, and mm-hmm. it drew point zero nine. That's that's AEW numbers, man. That is absolutely brutal. And they said there were that's no not problems. brutal for that for that those numbers for that time. That's point a three oh o'clock. Nine, not point huh? nine, point oh. oh nine. Oh, okay. I'm... And it said it was an abysmal. They lost nine million dollars that year after making thirty million the year before. Mm-hmm. Um, WCW that is. And funny enough, they did not make thirty million because that doesn't even sound like the payroll for Hall, Nash, and Hogan. Oh, yeah, okay, now you can start. Not to mention yeah. Brett. Again, we're not getting. We're not gonna go into no, the book to WCW. Saying, you don't make thirty million dollars when your contracts are more than that. But, re- but remember, the revenues of sponsorships, the revenues of marketing agreements, the revenues of television partnerships that pays back to WCW. That's why they accumulated more gross revenue. Again, net profit. Is that the gross a, or the net? Again, again, we the gross is there. I don't know the net, but again, the gross is there. We don't. We don't know the books. T- TW again, honesty again. They lost a lot more money in the 2000, 2000 and 2001. We know that much. We got right. the books on that one, but we didn't get the books on when of, of the grosses in the Phoenix and in the hierarchy of the Monday Night Wars. But let's put a bow on this on the uh, beach brawl aspect. The winner of that it was a coveted beach brawl and snow brawl trophy. So again, Conan won the winter brawl one, and on the spring side, the spring break side. Chris Jericho won the beach brawl. So TW put a bow in it. Did the, the right winners win at the Absolutely. right time, at the right the, event? The, the first one, no. Um, but I could see if Crush would have won it. Why not? Right. But also mm-hmm. he's part of a tag team and his partner was eliminated first. That made that make him look weird. I think Booker T should have won uh, um, the first one. But at the same time, he's still part of Harlem Heat. He's not singles yet. So it ended up with, being all right for him down the road crush never did anything um by himself um mm-hmm. and i i look at conan and i'm like how is that guy ever over the crowd actually you know it's funny now that i think back on it the crowd actually did repeat his saying when he did that viva la rasa right they said it back like of he course. did the, and so there were at least enough people there to know it, unless he gave them a script and told them say this when i come out there but they popped when he got out you know, got back in with the security jacket. And well, the production assistants did their job. The MTV yeah. assistants did their job. So saying, I think the, the right crowd. guy won that one in, 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 in the thought that Conan was over. But Conan mm-hmm. to me is the 1999 version of Eddie Kingston, but he actually does work out. That's, that's what he is. He just, they're, they're just, I don't understand their people liking them. They're, they don't have it. Now that I've said that, mm-hmm. I had an interaction on one of those 917 wrestling news sites that me and you always get dragged into. I, that you're half the reason I get dragged in them because you'll they'll show me that you wrote a comment on there, and then I got to come back you up. And I had a conversation, and you're gonna have to believe this. It was so pleasant that at the end of it, I said to the guy, "You know what, man? Because of this interaction between you and I, this pleasant interaction." I'm going to start cutting Eddie Kingston some slack because one thing, hell may have frozen over already because I liked um, Cody and Punk coming in respectively. Not, it didn't take Punk coming back to WWE. I liked him a year ago. But anyway, Eddie Kingston has one thing that I think every wrestler should have, and it's so obvious that he has it, and it's so obvious others don't. You know what that is? Herpes. Passion for the business. Oh, okay. That dude appreciates every second of airtime he gets, which is the absolute polar opposite of Moxley, 
who always comes across like he's doing you a favor being on your television. And he might not be that way. He might be appreciative in the background. He doesn't back that up. Well, you know, uh, you know, the dues that Eddie Kingston paid, right. no, no lie. I mean, being right. in the indie circuit and not getting the TV time. Right. You know, maybe My WWE thing. wanted him and he didn't want to be under the Vince McMahon bubble. So this was a blessing in disguise to have AEW on, you know. He turned them down? He turned down WWE. Okay. So that fits along with what I feel about Eddie Kingston. I've always felt like he thinks he's better than he is. Um, but well, I don't have, know about better than maybe again with the Vince McMahon regime and stuff like that. Maybe no, it would no, be no. different. Time, but I'm saying if if, if w, professor right here, right I, now, I understand if that. all of a sudden Triple H third lined into our conversation and offered you and I a job mopping, we'd both take it. Right? It better, it better pay though. I'm not doing it for free. Again, I'm just. But my yeah. point is, if Eddie Kingston, especially the struggles that you say that he went through coming up. If that guy got offered a job from Vince, unless it was for 25 grand a year and he felt like he was being undercut, why would you turn that down? At the very least, if you don't get on a roll and you get cut, everyone still for one day. From what, knows from what I remember, Eddie Kingston was offered an NXT deal. Maybe that's why he just didn't want it. Yeah. Well, either way, the point is, this guy pointed out to me that it's pretty well known that Eddie has some struggles with self-esteem, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've decided that a lot of his cockiness might be compensation for that. Like he's trying to sell himself because he has so little that if he says su such grandiose things that he too will believe it if the fans do. So I decided... I am no longer going to hate on Eddie Kingston, but I had to make that comparison to Conan because that's how I felt about Conan back then. I don't think Conan struggles with any kind of self-esteem issues. I just think that guy thinks he's more important than he actually really is. And I just, I don't get his popularity. If, if you're not a fan of yourself, no one will be. So, you know, you've got to have that confidence. you got to have that swag for yourself. I, I agree with the logic, but I don't think it's always true. I think there's yeah. a lot of people. Kurt Cobain comes to mind. Again, we, we think, well, you're the gatekeeper, so that's why you name, you're going to name some names. But I'm would that, that guy's pretty beloved, but yes. obviously he didn't have that same love for himself. There you go. So let's put a bow on the beach brawls, the snow brawls, and the video bash. Again, a nice uh, – it looked good on paper. I will say this. I'll put a bow on, on my end, and then TW put a bow on his end, and we'll close this out. It was nice on paper. It was probably nice in the Atlanta offices that Bischoff thought this was a coup that, you know, we took uh, MTV away from the WWE. But yet the end result was MTV used them like prostitutes and they didn't, you know, they turned them out like tricks. Let's say Nobody TW benefited didn't. from it. Right. That's all you're going to say? That, 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 that's the bottom line. They both got nothing. They, they, both, they both reached for the roses and got nothing but thorns. Well, they, they reached for something and they got, what What was it, 0 0.09? 0 0.09. What is that in, in terms of ratings? Like 9,000 people. Is it 0.9, 900,000? It could be 90,000. Well, yeah, I think it's 90,000. So that, that, you know what? Some YouTube uh, views are more than the 90,000 that, that watched the spring brawl and the, and the winter brawl itself. Yeah, so it, This is AEW numbers, these 90,000. <laughs> Well, at the AEW, at least gets, you know, double that. But anyway, with that being said, <laughs> we close on this episodic episode, episode 179, the special edition, the WCW NTV crossover attempts of 1998 or 1998 and 1999. So what are we going to do next week, uh, Reflection Nights and TW? Well, you know what? TW wanted me to watch a Christmas movie. And we can't get it. TN Couponer tried to get me the link, and it was on a, a different family channel. It's not on the Hallmark channel. So The Jericho one? Yeah, the Jericho one. So we can't watch that one. So, but I do. And no I, I, there there are some Christmas movies, but I did not feel. I, I what, It's not like I'm not in the Christmas spirit because Santino Morella did Jingle All the Way to, and The Miz did a, a sort of like a Mr. Scrooge type of Christmas movie with himself and Paige called Santa's Little Helper. 
but I'm going to put a curveball on TW. I'm going to put a curveball on all the Reflectionites. We are going to do a movie, a wrestling movie, from 1978, starring the Fonz, Henry Winkler. Scrooge. Oh, no. It's called The One and Only, where Henry Winkler plays a gorgeous George type wrestler. And is guess YouTube? who? Yes, it is. Ugh. And guess who his manager is? Bobby Heenan. No. Jimmy Hart. T Tattoo from uh, Fantasy oh, Island. That's beautiful. So TW is going to love this clusterfuck of a movie. So that is my Christmas present to TW. Not a wrestling movie where we can laugh together, but at least I'm, I'm going to know that TW is going to be miserable for the next 90 minutes watching the one and only. I'm going to send them the link. And it's all not that Christmas, stuff. though? No, nah, it's not a Christmas Man, movie. We annually do a Christmas movie Man, in December. This is my Christmas present for me to you. You're gonna love the Fonz in this movie, in this wrestling movie. Fair enough, but I'm gonna yeah. find Jingle all the way too. I'm gonna watch that anyway. That's on YouTube, also. I ain't gonna find it on YouTube. <laughs> okay. I will buy the shit before I watch it on YouTube. Well, you know what? Those Christmas movies was you had to buy them, so I didn't want you to, you know, pay your hard-earned money because you're already you're spending your hard-earned money. Santa Claus last year with Hulk Hogan or whatever. But, but again, I'm trying to, you know, save. Put some money in your pocket, save it so this way you can pay for those male hookers. But anyway, TW, give out those social. What year was it? 1978? What? Yes, the one and only. Rent or buy on Prime. Let's see what it costs. Rent for $379 or buy for $1299. You don't have to do either because I'm going to get you the link. In All right, I'll look at your link, and if it's not brutal, but I already know what it's going to do. I'm right when I'm actually getting interested in it or losing interest, it's gonna go. We'll be back in 30 seconds and give me some bullshit commercial. Hey, I can't. Well, you if you buy the if you buy the premium on YouTube for 15 dollars a month, you'll get no commercial interruptions. But again, TW, give out those socials so we can get out of here. Ah. They want, dude. I wouldn't pay them five dollars a month. That's the premium. Uh, 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 what do you, you know, get for? A friend of mine is. She has a YouTube account. You get account. their cable? You get like live TV on there? I have no idea, but you yeah, pay you $15. Don't. That's like 90 a month. You pay $15 <laughs> a month for no commercial interruptions and probably the YouTube premium channel for all it the live that, TV shit. It ain't that important to me. Okay. All right. So you can catch us at the Pro Wrestling Coalition Network sponsor, PWC Network at Podbean.com. You can find Hami Media Group there as well at Hami Media Group at Podbean.com, as well as HMG at ChannelAttitude.com. Our X is at PW Reflection. Uh, Nuts and Volts PW is Travis, as I mentioned him. Uh, Big Ray, you can find him all over the social media is at Big Ray Hernandez. And every Wednesday, the Next Level Podcast is live. And then you have me, X, and Instagram is at Tommy Wonder 19. Also, X and TikTok is at the Tommy Wonder. Snapchat is number wonder, Facebook.com backslash. Tommy Wonder, and then you can find Big Vito and Noel at bigvitobrand.wixsite.com, patreon.com backslash the Big Vito brand, and you can watch the early release of the reflection video at twitch.tv backslash the Big Vito brand. And you know what, TW, just in case, when you, you, you're enjoying this uh, Henry Winkler movie that I'll send you for next week, the yep. week after we might do another movie. We might do The Santa's a Little Helper. So if we find this for free, we might yeah. do it. Well, again, we'll do the Christmas theme movie on the next one to kind of like cap off the year. How about that? Is that okay? Sounds good. All right. So you do a movie that I want you to do and be miserable, and then I'll do the, I'll do the other I movie. Be miserable. Uh, I love the Fonz, okay. man. He and looks like Jerry Lawler and Andy Kaufman on the cover of that thing, just so you know. Well, they had again, a baby. It, yeah, it, that's why I wanted to. That's when, when I looked at it, I said, you Shouldn't know what? Shouldn't all those WWE movies be on the Peacock? No. Not all of them were WWE studio movies. I don't Page think. Page and him? That should be, but again, they're not all on the Peacock. They're still they're still under a deal with the uh, the studio, maybe New Line Cinema itself too. Buy movie HD nine ninety nine Santa's Little Helper. I ain't buying the shit. But anyway, <laughs> you can find me on the X at PWS PRF. That's PWS Prof. And if this gets uploaded by Eight Track Brown, this will be on the PWS YouTube networks. Follow my brothers in arms, Billy Ray Valentine at OB1, you know me. And of course, the king of the reactions, 8-Track Brown at the number 8, TRC, T-R-A-C Brown. <laughs> and again, on the PWSL Networks, 
we might do a New Year's special reflection night. So if you're a fan of the PW also, we are going to do a New Year's, you know, year in review slash the Professor's Perspective Awards. Those are the most important awards in wrestling. The Wrestling Observer, they're bullshit. They're biased. Uh, wrestling Inc., bullshit and bias. Alvarez, bullshit and bias. The Professor's Perspective, the most objective awards out there. So, you know, stay tuned on the YouTube networks, Reflection Night. Stay tuned. And with that being said, I'm the Professor. That's Mr. Wonderful. Dum Dum doing its own. The Iron Stomach one. The conservative liberal. The liberal conservatives. The man with the uh, glistening booty hole for the, you know, for his January 2020 quack throw excursions. Woo! Tommy Wanna is saying good night, and we'll see you next time here at the PWR Podcast at the Hami Media Group at Powerbeam.com. Peace. with the bar, the bar, the bar, diggy, diggy. That was bad. That was really bad. Dude, I was trying to come up with the silly. It's bar with the bar, the bang, the bang. Jesus.